me to make those crooked places straight. I'm walking, I'm walking with the spirit, and I'm talking, I'm talking to the spirit. I love I'm learning the spirit, and I'm turning, I'm turning to the spirit. I'm growing with the spirit.
this in every one of us In your eyes it's me I see It's in every one of us You are my reflection Hello. Good morning, everyone. You all look fabulous. Welcome to our 10 o'clock service this morning. I'd like to take this time to welcome our first time guests, as well as the people who took the time to visit us this morning online. And we certainly appreciate all of you tuning in. And for those that are present, please remember to fill out your connection card that you received this morning and let us know if you need prayer for anything in your life. <sighs> wow, it's wonderful being up here. Um, we have some beautiful flowers here in front of us today, here and also over here. Uh, this beautiful arrangement right here is from Fran Peterson celebrating Hoot's birthday. Happy birthday, Hoot! And this wonderful arrangement in front of me is in honor of Valerie Weiner from Teresa Lowry. Happy birthday, Teresa. Valerie. 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 I'm sorry. All right, so here we are, and everybody is looking so lovely. You might want to get up right now and go around and see everyone and just give them a hug and just say good morning to everybody. Oh, I'm sorry, don't get up yet. <laughs> this is my first time, but I'm loving it. Please listen to our selection. Energy of peace. peace. I am the energy of 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 peace. Energy. I am God. The energy of God. I am the energy of God. One more time. Nice eyelashes. I am the energy of God. All right. Now you can walk around, shake a hand, get a hug. <laughs>
morning. As we move into this morning's contemplation time, please take a moment to check in on Facebook and then silence your cell phones. Thank you. Let's begin with this week's affirmation from your program. You might choose to cut it out and read it aloud often this week to remind you of the truth of your being. I rejoice in my oneness with God and all that it creates. God loves and demonstrates as each of its expressions, equally and unconditionally. Take in a deep breath and let the music take us into a silent place followed by this morning's invocation. Love gathers here. It is from love that all else follows. Infinite and ever-present, love is spirit in its purest form. And that love is in every one of us.
peace gathers here. It expresses as harmony. It is community. It is God in action. It is ever present. And it's in every one of us. Wisdom gathers here. It is one mind, one consciousness, from which all things are born. This wisdom is infinite and ever present. This wisdom is God. It dwells deep within and is in every one of us. We gather here as expressions of love, peace, and wisdom. The God within, equally and present in all of creation. This God presence is us, as us. And this power of God is available equally to each of us, for it's within every one of us. It is with great gratitude for this opportunity of celebration that I recognize that power and presence and the oneness of all that is in this holy space. And it is with gratitude that I invite you to open this grand celebration with me by saying, and so it is.
Cause I can only be me Flowers cannot bloom Until it is their season As we would not be here Unless it was our day to stand way back from the microphone. I'm Valerie Weiner, practitioner here, and I want to welcome all of you on behalf of Michelle Pitt, Christine Page Bias, Clay T. White, Kelly Marshall, and Debbie Little to celebrate this Practitioner Sunday with you, which practitioners lead on the fifth Sunday of uh, whatever months we have a fifth Sunday. So anyway, I will start the message and each of my wonderful colleagues in practitioner service will also join uh, at the podium. In nine days, we'll elect the 45th president of the United States. On November 8th, all of the guesses and projections will be realized, resolved. So for many months, the election experience has certainly been challenging. Ideas, opinions, attitudes, and even prejudices have been voiced loud and clear. Certainly this has been an election unlike any other that we've experienced in this country or even in the world. And for those of us who live these faith principles, this is a perfect time, a perfect time for us to remember God is in every one of us God plays no favorites. As some of you know, this political experience might resonate a bit differently for me than it might for you. In 1983, I began my political public service life as press secretary and speechwriter for Congressman, later Senator Harry Reid in Washington, D.C. I returned to Nevada in 1988 and opened my own company and I worked with high visibility individuals, often candidates. Then in 1996, I became one of those candidates and was elected to the Nevada State Senate. I served there for 16 years until term limits required me to retire in 2012. Throughout these years and beyond, I've affirmed the truth of God, love, being the essence of each of us. I've learned the importance of stepping back, stepping back from the outside message, which might tempt me to forget what truth is. God, God in and as each of us. And I remember that God is the center and source of who I am 
and who everyone is. This means that the truth vibrates within each and every one of us. This is how we pray here. In step one of affirmative prayer, we recognize the truth that God is all there is. And in step two, we affirm the truth that I am one with God. In this truth of oneness with God, every idea is one with God. So this means that each one of us is one with the other. It can't work any other way. This is the namaste that puts a smile on my face. And I choose to remember this namaste of life today, nine days from today, and beyond. For the truth is, God is the center and source of each of its ideas. Out of itself, God creates. And God can only love each individualized expression of itself. Knowing this, I celebrate God as love, eternally expressing this as each and every one of us. Namaste. Good morning. I'm Debbie Little, and I am so honored to be a part of this team and asked to present my message this morning. I thought I knew what that title was. And I even started to form words around it. And then a friend challenged me one day. And everything that I thought, all the illusions that I thought, kind of shattered my ideas. All he said to me was, here and now. Can you feel the moment? Can you be the presence? Can you feel the presence within yourself? So I started to think, so what is it that we all share inside of us? Is there more, something more here, something that cannot be named, something ineffable, some deep inner holy essence that we all share? Whenever, and wherever this inner essence shines within us and it reveals itself to you when you are present. So when you're present, it is realized within you. I know that I can't share your past. I can't share your present. I mean, I can't share your future. The only thing that I can share with you right here, right now, is this moment. And so, for just this second, I would invite you just to close your eyes for a moment. Just close your eyes, if that feels comfortable. And feel your form sitting here quietly being still, inviting that presence within yourself to connect with everyone here. Just this moment. Now open your eyes. That's all we have. Being together right here, right now. And I want to take some words from Eckhart Tolle. That he says that presence is needed to become aware of the beauty, the majesty, the sacredness of nature. Have you ever gazed up into the infinity of space on a clear night, awestruck? 
by the absolute stillness and the inconceivable vastness of it. Have you listened, truly listened, to the sound of a mountain stream in a forest? Or to the song of a blackbird at dusk on a quiet summer evening? There is a question. Could it be that that nameless essence and your presence are one and the same? Would it be there without your presence? Can you go deeply into it and find out for yourself? Do you feel that low level ache sometimes, searching for something that you don't know what exists, but it is there when you are completely, wholly present in this moment. Thank you. It's in every one of us. We are each God, spirit in expression. God is everywhere present at all times in full power. It's in every one of us. It is every one of us, and we can use this spirit to the capacity we embody and believe it. How does this work? Do you have a significant other, a pet, or a relative that you sometimes love unconditionally? Remember that magical first, second, third date with that significant other, that special time with your pet, that special time with family, go to that place right now. Allow that feeling to flow all over you. It is this power, this spirit, this love, this peace, abundance that you can use in all situations, in all arenas of your life. Use it to turn the invisible into the visible. My brother McCoy moved into a neighborhood in Yorktown, Virginia. He served military duty in Germany, Vietnam, Guam, all of many other countries. He could talk to anyone about anything and loved it. But this chosen retirement community wasn't like that. No one spoke to each other. And as witnessed by my other brother, Earl, McCoy began to wave at everyone. People mowing the lawns, walking their dogs, just everyone, all the time, he would wave and speak. Soon, everybody else were waving and speaking. And then they began to converse. My brother's desire was for unity, harmony, and love. What do you want to change in your life? More joy, more laughter, more abundance? Let it pour out of you onto each and every one of us. Good morning, I'm Christine Page. So, I'd like to start off with a quote from Ernest Holmes. It would be difficult to believe in a God who cares more for one person than another. What I know about God is that it's unconditional love. I know there's no separation, and I know that it is all our supply. So I trust the process it provides. When I think about each one of us, I know that our beings are filled with so many God qualities. Just to name a few, I see beauty, wisdom, wholeness, and I see love. This is who we are, and we can only be who we are. I know that God is within everybody. It moves as us, its being is us, it outpictures as us. 
the reason that God cares for us all the same is because we're one. We have been gifted with all that we need. When thinking about this service this morning, I thought of one of my loves, and that is poetry. So I prepared a poem that I'd like to share with you called Who We Are. Beauty is in every one of us. We were made to be beautiful. Open your eyes to the beauty around you. It was made to be beautiful. I may have been asleep for years, but today I recognize that I was made to be beautiful. There is beauty in every one of us. God made beauty to behold. Every person, everything was created in its likeness. It is in every one of us. Wisdom is in every one of us. Open your mind to the inner consciousness. The infinite intelligence awaits its time to commune to a higher place through us. I may have been lost. I may have lost this connection before, but now I yearn for its completion, and I'm aware it's in every one of us. Wholeness is in every one of us. As we connect with that place, the inner peace escapes to those around us, and we find ourselves as one. Our hearts are filled and wholeness becomes us. It defines us. It is in every one of us. Love is in every one of us. And it's our strength within, the uniting force that binds us to others. Love is our source. It is our inspiration. It's love that leads us and sources direction. Love also leads us to who needs it. And that is in each and every one of us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michelle Pitt, and it is such a pleasure to be here in front of all of you magnificent brothers and sisters. So what does it's in every one of us mean to me? Because that's what this is about. This is about how I interpret this. This is about my connection and my consciousness with this amazing quote. And the second quote from Ernest Holm, which actually gets you thinking for me even deeper about how we are all one and how do I present that in my life? This is a little tall. So I know that God is and I am. I know that as the core of my being. And God is always expressing through, in, and as me through everyone and everything that I come in contact with, I get the unique opportunity to witness and experience all of this all of the time. The caveat is that it's if I choose that, if I choose to remain in that oneness and align myself with the God of my understanding, then I get to witness all the beauty and all the love and all the uniqueness of every individual person I come in contact with. So of course I took this to the laboratory of my life and I looked back over at the last couple months and I realized that I was practicing this before I knew I was practicing this. I was experiencing this before I was experiencing it, this. And that's the, the unique part of my life that I can be absorbed in it and not realize what actually is happening. And I can include this God's love with everyone. I work at Starbucks and it's kind of quite amazing that some of these homeless people come in and the reaction that people have for them. And I see God in each and every one of them. I see empathy. I feel empathy. I aspire to understand to be that place of love and joy for them, whether I can give them the key, the code to the bathroom or not. For that's not my ruling, that's somebody else's ruling that I have to follow. And being a person within a structure, 
I have to be able to do that too. I have to be able to live freely as the person I am, that it's in every one of us, and we are not different. We are more alike than we are different. We are more of the same than different. Even the homeless, even the person that doesn't seem to be with it or talking fast enough for me, it allows me to slow down and really look at everyone individually and collectively as the unique, amazing beings that you came here to be and to honor that and to celebrate that with you and around you for that is the joy of this life of mine, to be able to, to go around and illumine what I need to illumine and to pray for what I need to pray and to meditate when I need to meditate and to admire when I just need to sit back and be in awe of this beautiful, beautiful life. Is it always perfect? Absolutely not. Is it the way I want it all the time? Absolutely not. But my way doesn't always work. If I just quiet my mind and quiet myself and let God take over, life is easy. Life is beautiful. Life is grand. And that's what I have gotten from this. Seeing the God I choose to make the experience pleasant and kind is a gift. It's a gift that I have to nurture. It's a gift that I have to protect. It's a gift that I have to give back because if I don't give back, then I'm keeping it all to myself and that's no fun because I love to give back. Um, for me, this whole process of coming together with five other practitioners and putting a service together was, it's in every one of us. It's already perfect. It's already divine. How could it not be? We're standing on holy ground. I had a friend that once told me there's not a spot that God is not, and I thought, what a revelation. I don't know if she made it up, I don't know if it was if it's hers or whatever, but if you think about that through your life, there's not a spot that God is not. And you drive down the street and you see a flood and a car accident and a policeman with his gun out and all that other stuff, God's there too. I have to recognize it, I have to identify it and know that that is the truth. For there is not a spot that God is not. Thank you. Travel lightly. <laughs> We're now at the place in our service when we have the expansive opportunity to celebrate the law of circulation. This is a time when we consciously give a portion of our treasures to the source of all treasures, God. And we know that as we give, we receive abundantly. As we open our hands and our hearts to release our financial gifts, whether here or electronically, we allow them to go forth and do great work at this center and in the world. The longer that those gifts take to return to us in whatever form they show up, the more hands that they're passing through and the more lives they're blessing. Truly, what we give multiplies over and over again doing God's work. So as our prosperity acceptors come forward, please hold your financial gift in your hand or over your heart. Take a moment to bless it, and as you place it in the basket, know that you're contributing to abundance in your life, this center's life, and beyond. You are contributing to a world that works for everyone.
Absolutely fabulous is that. One moment in time, this moment. It's time for our announcements. And uh, our first announcement is about the October book of the month. You can get in the, in the bookstore for 20% off. 
and it's called The Surrender Experiment. My Journey into Life's Perfection by Michael Singer. He's the author of The Untethered Soul. Our featured book of the month will always be 20% off the cover price, plus you pay no taxes or shipping. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Next, I want to tell you about the Interfaith Forums. They continue tonight. Pick up a brochure out in the lobby on your way out today. Our own Reverend Doug will be a panelist tonight, and it is right around the corner at the University Methodist Church. Reverend Cindy will be the moderator. Please come out at 7 to support us in this wonderful outreach and educational event. I now want to invite Clay T. up to tell you about Gourmet for God. So know that you are amazing. You have agreed to host over 40 different fabulous events for our fundraiser, yay! From burgers and a hike, to bingo and bagels, to the Kentucky Derby, to dance lessons and Italian food, I could go on and on. Today though, the real fun begins, the bidding on these fabulous events. So come on over, place your bids, and over the next weeks, you'll watch the seats fill up as you increase your bids. Now remember that the monies for these events are in addition to your regular tithes and offerings. The Gourmet for God tables are in the social hall. Committee members are ready to serve you. So come on over and have some fun with us. Okay, thank you, Clay T. Wednesday night service this week is entitled Wholeness is Our Very Being with ministerial intern and practitioner Colleen Tanaka with special music by practitioner Lynn Frankenberger. This evening we'll, we'll be preceded by our Bucket Bowl Dinner Fellowship which begins at 5.30. Next on our agenda are our classes. The classes are coming. They are spiritual economics with which it begins this week on Thursday, November 3rd. It'll be held till December 22nd, and Grieving Mindfully will be held on Mondays, November 7th through December 12th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And for more information, you can seek the education table out in the hall. Next, come out and join us for a free community visioning with the Vision Corps next Sunday, November 6th, from noon to two. And as a member of this group, I know that this is a powerful spiritual practice that can have a real and positive impact on our center. So please come out and join us next Sunday. Who brought something delicious to share today? Oh, okay, I see a few hands back there. Thank you. We've been pretty spoiled for the last six weeks or so, being able to enjoy specials that have been prepared for scheduled events but the self-supporting aspect of this has waned quite a bit. So, if you're out there and you, you can bring food next week, we would certainly appreciate it. If your last name starts with Q, S, T, U, or Z, or if you just feel like doing it, bring something next week for us to share, something delicious. Thank you so much. I'll have Reverend Doug come up right now because he's going to tell you about the festivities after service today. Now, Thank some you. of you have said I was just lazy today. <laughs> Taint so. I came as a retired minister. <laughs> and my cup runneth over. Um, so you're, if you've been here on Halloween Sunday before, you're used to the costume parade and contest. We're going to do that, but we're going to do that after the service ends. So even if you're not in costume, I'd love it if you could stick around and help vote for the, we have three prizes for the winners here. Um, and so if you are in costume, especially stick around. We'll have a little bit of fun after the service for about five to 10 minutes. No big deal, but lots of fun. All right, thanks.
So now that everything is settled, every word that has been spoken, every song that has been sung, we are going to go into prayer. And I would invite the practitioners, the ministers, to surround this chamber of love with prayer, knowing that these beautiful people pray for you daily. They keep you in their high watch, knowing that everything is perfect and wonderful in your life. So as we close our eyes and we enter into this moment, we feel that vibration within ourselves, that background music, that joy to our soul, that God is ever present. We feel that infinite power, the one mind, created out of itself moving through, in, around as creation. The infinite peace. We breathe in. Peace is where I am. That universal womb of possibility that we are birthed out of. Unlimited. The grace. The divine right action that flows throughout life. There is the wisdom and the beauty and grace. We are filled with that power and that presence, whatever name we give it. It is within ourselves. For I know that we are all connected moment by moment. That we are all just individualized expressions of love and light, uniquely you. There has never been or ever will be anyone quite like you. You are connected to this power, connected to this love. You are one, for you are the breath of God breathing you into existence. So I know in this moment the great power and the beauty and the connection and the love feel it within myself. And I know and I can claim and declare that no matter where you go, God is right with you. And when you sit in the quiet silence and be still in that moment, you feel that ineffable, beautiful presence within yourself. It is there. Whenever you need it, whenever you seek it out, it seeks you into existence. For right now, I know that God is my path, my departure, my destination. There is only God. So right here, I can say, I only have this moment. I invite you to say this with me right now. I only have this moment. I feel the presence within myself. And I am enlightened by it. We feel that vibration of these words within ourselves because we spoke it. We spoke it out into the universe. And it comes back to us with every smile, with every hug. Your presence affects just the person walking down the street by the beauty of who you are. So stay in the moment. Realize God within yourself. And that meeting, that blending, that presence within you in gratitude. I say thank you. Thank you for this beautiful celebration today. The laughter, the fun, the messages. It is in gratitude that we come together 
And remember to say thank you. Thank you. So I release this prayer. I release these words into the loving action of the law. Knowing as they are said, they are answered with yes, yes, yes. Within that universal rhythm of life, I have it all within myself. So I let these words rest. I let them be. And so it is. Thank you. So the final thoughts, and the ministers can sit, or the practitioners, please. We will have a closing song after this is over, but I just want to remind everybody to, after the contest and all the fun and bringing your beautiful selves here today, I appreciate it so much, that go to the bookstore and check it out. Go to the prayer room and invite yourself to just sit before a practitioner who knows the truth of who you are and just welcome that into your life. Either it doesn't have to be something, a challenge or anything in your life. It can be a celebration for we are there to celebrate with you. And we love to be that with you. And then the social hall for all the goodies. So we're going to stand together right now and just hold hands. And we are going to do our final song. And then following this is our contest. So please stay here for that. was meant to be with God as our power united all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment So uh, is everyone sticking around just for a little while? So all of you who are in costume who want to be a part of the contest, please come forward just to the front of the room here. Then we're going to have you parade around the whole sanctuary so everybody can see you. Come on up. Come on. Come on, Picasso. Just line up right there. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So as you're ready, I want you to start making your way around the outside of the sanctuary so everybody can see you. Come on, Wonder Woman. Here you go. Now you're going to start walking around. Follow Reverend Cindy. Go ahead and start walking around and show everybody your costume. We're going to walk around the hole. There we go. All right. Take a good look, everybody, because we're going to vote by applause. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> Take a good look. We're taking a good look. If you're finished, come on up to the lights. All the way up here now. 
Come all the way, if you were to poo, come all the way across here, but stay in the light if you can, like that. All the way, shoulder to shoulder, it's gonna be a tight fit. Shoulder to shoulder, all the way, all the way. Excuse me, I gotta come back. Are we all the way up? All right. Okay, there's some mighty fine creativity going on up here. All right, so I'm going to stand behind each person and I'm gonna just put this above their head. And so it's by applause, we're going to determine who is the favorite costume and the second and the third, okay? So. I'm sorry. Wait, my, I can hear for the music, but my head. <laughs> the munchkins are singing, ding dong, the witch is dead. That's awesome. Okay, here we go, ready for the applause. I'm going to have to get the rest of you to go around front because I don't think that half the room can't see you. Huh? Don't count you. Okay. Okay. So you go, go out to the front because I want everybody to see you both. So go out to the front. And why don't you go out to the front too because I don't think everybody could see you. All right. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I, th I think I could tell the top three, all right? This one, and this one, and this one, yeah? All right, thank you all for playing the lightning round. <laughs> now we're gonna have our final vote, all right? So the three of you, would you please come to the front? All right, um, singing team, I'm gonna have to have your help. To, to just hear it, okay? Just to help me discern. Here we go, you ready? Are we ready? Okay. I believe we have our winner in Pablo Picasso. I believe that was the most, in, most enthusiastic. $25 to the bookstore. Our second place is this amazing tall person. $15 right over there in the bookstore, congratulations. And Wonder Woman, third prize. Thank you so much, congratulations. Talking, talking to the spirit. I'm learning, I'm learning from the spirit. 